Recently, I picked up a brand new Xbox Series S console, and it's only right that the very first game I get 100% of the achievements for on this new account is Mortal Kombat 1. Now, a quick overview, this game has a total of 50 achievements, ranging from story mode to invasions, which is basically like the seasonal single player content. And there are some achievements for playing online, which if you know me, is what I'm looking forward to most. But in order for me to get started, I had to become a ninja in no time, by completing the basic tutorial and getting our very first achievement. Next, I had to make the decision on if I wanted to go into the grind that was gonna be invasions right away, or if I wanted to just steamroll through the story mode on an easier difficulty and start racking up some achievements along the way, which is what I decided to do. Halfway through the story, I netted myself a new timeline achievement, and this happened right around the first fight of chapter nine. A little while later, I found myself on the final chapter of the story mode, and what's really cool about this is they actually let you pick which character you wanna beat the game with. Of course, I had to go with my favorite character in the game, Smoke, and I completed the campaign. We don't quite get the achievement just yet though, because we still have to be a fan. And by that, I mean, thank you for being a fan, for watching through all of the credits, which ended up being like over 20 minutes long. But then pops the what just happened achievement for completing 100% of the story mode. But even though we've done these, we're not quite done with these achievements just yet. We actually have to go back into chapter 15 and complete it one more time for the who was that achievement. This time I picked one of my main characters through multiple MK games, Raiden, and we clean things up nice and quickly. Now with the story done, it's time to move on into the invasions portion of these achievements, which as I mentioned earlier, might turn into a bit of a grind. We start out in Cage Mansion, which is the tutorial level, and along the way, we pick up an achievement for using a key. Now, what really shocked me is how many achievements you get just from playing the tutorial. It actually ends up being 10. First, we got Take and Deny for trading an item from an Earthrealm shop. Then we quickly got So I Just Kill Stuff for completing five encounters. For Talismans, we get two achievements back to back, Ultimate Power, for using one and so crafty for forging one. Another set of back-to-back -back achievements popped up as we got ourselves the Titan achievement for dealing 10,000 damage and the always accessorized achievement for equipping a relic. Our next achievement was actually pretty ironic since I barely made it out alive of this one but with a sliver of hope we survived the encounter. Another easy one with make way I'm coming through for clearing an obstruction and then we finish up cage mansion tutorial with it has begun. I really still can't believe that 10, one fifth of all the achievements in this game are done in the invasions tutorial. Hey, I'm definitely happy with that though. But with that out of the way, our main task now is to complete the season of invasions for the vanquish achievement for defeating the final boss or Raiden for the season that I'm recording this. Don't worry though, we're gonna be getting plenty of achievements done along the way. Like for example, Talismania for using a talisman 10 times and adventure time for completing 25 unique encounters. After that, we got Found You for unlocking a secret fight. And then after some more traversing through the first Mesa, which happened to be an Outworld stage, I met up with my good MK11 friend Collector and got the Where's Blanche achievement. Now we've been laying quite a bit of the beat down on the CPU and making our way through the map, we started feeling stronger as we reached Invasions at level five, which was actually perfect timing because we had our first mini boss coming up. And by mini boss, I mean any other fight, but this one had two rounds and a weird animation in between. Not so big now, are you? Complete. With the mini boss out of the way, Way, it was time to continue on to the Mesa Major Boss. And this was Kung Lao, who was taken out with ease, and who to boss achievement unlocked. Now again, the only achievement left for bosses is to defeat the final boss, and we still have four whole Mesas to complete. We got some work to do. Upon entering Mesa 2, within just a few fights, I had spilled 5,000 pints of blood and got the beaten and broken achievement. Now this actually did not count during the story mode, which was a bit unfortunate, but it's an inevitable achievement anyway, so that's fine. But literally in the next fight, we hit 10 different brutalities, for the carnage achievement and even better just a few spaces down was bob and we got to recharge a talisman for the running on empty achievement i honestly feel like i'm ripping through these achievements right now which is great and thankfully through all these fights i was constantly switching between my cameo to use 10 different cameo characters and at the same time getting 10 different cameo fatalities and back-to-back -back achievements annihilation and making friends is easy no it's not at this point though i had been grinding through the seasonal content for a few hours now and i had quite a little bit of in-game cheddar so with 10,000 seasonal coins, I bought some skins and gear in the seasonal shop and also spent 10,000 coins at the shrine, which is basically like a loot box, and got two more achievements, big spender and give a coin. Right before heading back into invasions though, I noticed that I was really close to the eye of the Tigor achievement for spending an hour in practice mode, so I headed to the dojo to do some fun combos for the next couple of minutes. Basically, as soon as I got back into invasions, we got another relatively simple achievement for reaching level 10 and being unstoppable. And literally right after that, 
the very next fight we get a double achievement quest master for doing a daily quest and working overtime for doing a weekly quest i literally have no idea what i did so i guess these are just bound to happen eventually as well but again a lot of achievements for literally just playing i am always happy with that after using an ornate key on a chest for some lime blood soda that ended up being my 10th consumable used and so we got the there is no knowledge without power achievement we weren't quite in the clear just yet though because soon after we finally got ambushed and then a quick uppercut turned the ambusher to bits and we got the stop hiding achievement now what's ironic about me saying finally is if i'm not mistaken there was actually a patch at some point that reduced the amount of times you got ambushed and now i was like crossing my fingers for one for the achievement but a few seasons ago i was like dreading them every time they popped up it's just weird how those things work and now after pretty much just getting to the third mesa of the season i was able to find my third relic for the collector achievement man i really miss that character if any of you used to watch my mk11 collector videos from back in the day i always used to have so much fun with him it's a shame he got relegated to invasion shop and to the name of an achievement but hey you never know we could always get collector in combat pack too anyway throughout the course of the invasions journey we finally found and completed five unique test your might challenges for the you guessed it test your might achievement a few more nodes later and we finally get ermac to level 20 for the juggernaut achievement what's great about unlocking this one is it pretty much marks the last of the invasions achievements outside of just beating the very final boss of the season and we're still only on the fourth mesa and the final boss resides at the end of the sixth so now i can pretty much just turn off my brain and speed run through these turn off my brain is indeed what i did and i finally found myself at the final boss of the season raiden honestly by this point i had dumped so many points into my attack stat that just constant uppercuts and basic combos got me through this in just a few tries and after giving raiden the soul suck and after defeating Raiden, we got ourselves the Vanquished Achievement, officially putting a cap on that insane Invasions grind. Well, sort of. You see, there's still two more Invasions Achievements. One of them we'll get into in a second, but the other is High Score. Is that good? For going into Gateway Towers and getting over 5 million score. Now, honestly, I had never done one of these, so I just jumped into one to see what an average score would look like. And after the first run, it looks like we got just about a million. Honestly, not bad. But what's really cool is there's actually a breakdown of points. So I figured just try to do as many of these multipliers as possible and we should get the achievement the tactic used was flawless rounds with the brutality let's see how run number two goes but this time doing a tower with seven floors instead of just five to try to get some more points and just like that with eight million we cleared that high score and got the achievement so now that leads me to the very last achievement in invasions and this one is called the mighty have fallen and you have to complete a titan battle now the issue is these titan battles only appear for like a few days once every season and these seasons last for almost a few months so if for whatever reason i accidentally missed the one happening this season who knows when i'll be able to get this video out so i guess in the meantime we can finally move into something other than invasions for a little while and i couldn't be happier and from looking at what we have left which is just about 10 achievements to go i figured we would head to the classic towers which are basically just a gauntlet of matches and when you complete them you get a unique tower ending cutscene based on which character you completed it with and we had to get 10 of these with five different characters so there's quite a few that you can choose to do and it turns out you can actually just do this on the novice tower which is only six fights saving you quite a good amount of time on these taking about anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes if you also watch the cutscene we got through the first five using ermac smoke peacemaker scorpion and actually as i was going for number five sub zero i ended up achieving mastery with cameo sector so real quick i don't think we've talked about mastery too much but in mortal kombat 1 basically just for playing you level up whatever characters you're using most main roster characters go to level 35 the deal DLC characters go to level 20 and all the cameos go to level 15. Now I had been using Sector basically since the start of that whole invasions grind and I'm just now getting to level 15. These cameos need a lot of XP and we still need four more for the rolling with my crew achievement but that's for later. Upon finishing the fifth classic tower with Sub-Zero we earned ourselves the Puppet Master achievement. Now it was time for the next five characters to complete these with starting with Raiden then Quan Shi and actually during my eighth run through where I was using Reptile I got the achievement deadly assassin for doing 20 different fatalities now just two more runs and we're done with these 60 tower fights next up was lee may and for the final run unlocking the tower ending for omni man which was actually pretty sick honestly as an mk lore nerd these endings are always awesome to get a little more story about your favorite characters but just like that we got a happy ending we got the achievement happy endings now after countless hours of grinding against cpu in towers and invasions and story mode we can finally jump online and start to tackle some of these other achievements but right before that we got to customize because that's always one of my favorite parts after going through a bunch of the skins i've gotten from playing this long i changed up my combat card and got the achievement witness me for customizing 
Nice. But to really assert my dominance online, I had to taunt my opponent real quick and let them know they're in my arena. My lack of respect to my competitor earned me the total disrespect achievement. The next achievement was to play five combat league sets, which are all first to two. And what was awesome about this run was that I actually did not even drop a single match. Went straight through 10 games in a row to close out all five sets to nothing. Was definitely feeling it with Raiden and Jax when I was going for this, but now we're officially contenders. With only one more achievement for online mode, it was time to jump into some public King of the Hill lobbies. I joined up in one and waited my turn like a good sport, and when it was my time to challenge the king, I had to dethrone him. Since I just waited like 20 minutes for this, I wasn't about to lose, so I picked my main team, Raiden and Jax, and started sweating. After removing the king from the throne and claiming it for myself, we unlocked the Kingslayer achievement. Then I quickly realized royalty wasn't for me, and I gave up the throne. Throne. And with that, after just about a week's worth of grinding, albeit mostly invasions, we find ourselves at 48 out of 50 achievements. Now remember earlier I mentioned cameo mastery, so we need to get four more cameos to level 15. Now the thing is, you can get a lot of cameo XP in invasions, but we pretty much cleared through the entire season, so I'm just going to be spamming these gateway towers and a few online matches for the next couple of days just to level up these cameos. With Sector out of the way, I moved to Jax just because he was pretty high level already from doing the combat league achievement. And after maxing him out, it just so happened that the brand new DLC cameo Movado released, which was perfect timing. Then I quickly tried to run through Tremor, another cameo favorite of mine. And last but not least, I went to Frost. And this is the reason I was saving the seasonal gateway tower. That's because you get 4,000 cameo XP, which is amazing considering the nine floor daily tower only gives you about 1,500 XP. However, every time you beat the seasonal tower, it goes up a level, essentially making it more difficult the more times you clear it. However, I was able to get quite a few levels before it became just like an armor fest and took forever but with that the fifth and final cameo mastery is complete wait are you kidding me okay one more tower i guess for good measure and we unlock the rolling with my crew achievement i gotta say when i first started this and i was looking at all the achievements i did not think this was going to be the one that took the most play time it was actually brutal i don't even want to know how many towers i mindlessly completed to rank up these cameos now i know why less than one percent of the people that played this game have this achievement but now we are 49 out of 50 achievements after after all of these towers and all this grinding, we had one final achievement left to complete a Titan battle. Now, the issue with this is, let's say a Mortal Kombat 1 season is 60 days. The Titan battle will only appear for a few days and it's gone and then you have to wait till next season. Not only that, but there really isn't a set date. It kind of just happens. So at this point, with 20 days left in the season, I was just checking back every single day, hoping the Titan battle was there. And somehow, literally just a few days later, I opened up MK1 and I got this notification. The Titan battle was there, and that means there's just one thing left to do. This hunt is over. Just as Smoke says, this hunt is over. The mighty have fallen, and we have unlocked 100% of the Mortal Kombat 1 achievements.